Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, something short and sweet, hopefully, in this video. Um, Amstrad Module MP1. This is the power supply that I've been using to power my uh, CPC, the 464 you saw in a previous repair video there. So this is the you know the DC power jack that comes off. Uh, and I, what I mentioned uh, in the previous video that this goes to the monitor. That's actually incorrect. This goes to the back of the CPC. So you you know your video signals come out the back of the CPC into this device, um, and then this has got a modulator built in. So um, I've already removed the four screws, uh, I've not taken the lid off yet though, uh, yeah, four screws uh, in the corners here, uh, if we just lift the lid off, uh, yeah, so straight away um, you can see the modular unit here, I'll zoom in a little bit, yeah, I don't know if you can see that clearly, it's an MC1377P, that's the same PAL slash NTSC encoder chip that you get in many other systems actually in the Atari ST, in the Amiga A520, is it the modulators for the Amiga there, the 500s? Those contain an MC1377P. Um, and they're quite a common source of failure actually on those Amiga modulators, and occasionally on the Atari ST. Um, you get you know a, a tinge of a certain colour, like a pink or a blue or a green tinge. Um, and it's usually that chip that's faulty. Um, so the main thing, the main purpose of this video is to recap this. We've got a few on the modulator there. I'm probably not going to bother uh, swapping those out, they'll probably be alright, but these are going to be fairly well worn. Uh, so what we've got there, 4700, 16 uh, volts, you know, 4700 microfarad, I'm guessing that's going to be another 4700 stuck down, I think with some glue or something, so we'll perhaps do a similar thing, um, you know, I'll fit the same type of caps and just use a bit of hot glue or something uh, to secure them, uh, and a 1000, 16 volt there. Uh, so assuming there's nothing on the underside, I don't think there will be. Uh, there's very little there, you know, you've got your uh, transformer here. Um, I'm just looking what else is on there. Yeah, we've got a couple of volt, what look like voltage regulators. I'm guessing this provides both 5 volts and 12 volts. Uh, I'll get the meter onto this in a minute actually, and we'll just have a look what sort of AC ripple we've got and what, what outputs this is providing. I'm guessing, like I say, to 12 and 5. Um, nice, fairly high wattage uh, resistor there. Diodes. I was kind of expecting a bridge actually, <coughs> I'm not really seeing that, I mean we've got a couple of diodes here but they're different types so that would suggest to me that they're not part of a bridge. I'm wondering if it's like a half wave rectification or something, um, which is a bit brutal on the regulars, you know a bit hard on them. Uh, so I mean one mod might be to actually uh, you know, put a, a bridge, re full bridge rectifier. Uh, in a unit like this, actually. So I've got it powered on, you can hear it buzzing away. Uh, you can see we're on AC settings here. Uh, I'm just going to just touch these windings here, let's just see what we've got coming across there. Yeah, about 10 volts, 11 volts AC. So I'm not making a very good connection that, but yeah, it's between 10 and 11 volts AC. Uh, so I'm guessing this is going to be another winding, or a couple of windings, I should say. Yeah, about 9. So thinking about this now, it's not going to be providing 9 volts and 12 volts because there's only one, you only got one connector. There's only one thing this is powering other than the modulator. So I'm guessing we've got two, perhaps two voltage regulators here. One to power the uh, modulator, perhaps on a separate circuit, uh, and one for the 5 volts on here. Um, let's just see what uh, DC voltage we've got coming out of this. Yeah, about 5.2 two volts there you can see. Uh, let's just stick it on AC because I just want to see what AC ripple if anything we've got. Yeah very low amount of AC ripple on the digital multimeter there so you know it seems to be doing a fairly good job. Uh, I suspect we might see uh, you know some more on the scope. Um, I think I'm just going to take a closer look now just to try and identify what these are. Is it two five volt regulators or what? Yeah so not what I expected at all. These are SFC 2805EC uh, uh, voltage regulators which is interesting. Um, and with the fact we've got two of these, and I think there's two of these larger diodes here, and the two of these caps, I, I suspect they're both going to be the same size. I suspect one's regulating the positive pulse, one's regulating the, the uh, not pulse, so half of the cycle, and one's regulating the other half of the cycle. I think, I think there's something like that going on here. Because I can't see how else you would perhaps use those two uh, devices in here. Bear in mind, let's so all this is providing is, uh, you know, it's five volts. Now, there's, there's nothing else really in it. it. It would be a bit strange to power the modular 
separately having you know think having thought about it um so yeah that's what i suspect is going on so i'll just start to unscrew some of this stuff now uh, i'll have i'll perhaps recap this while i'm at it it doesn't make sense there's no point in leaving um old crusty caps and things on there these will be pretty used i would think you know the esr might not be great on these i might just check them on my uh, cheap uh, esr meter it's one of those cheap chinese uh, pick type based things and I can test it on the other proper multi the cap meter as well but that other cap meter doesn't test for ESR um, <coughs> hopefully she get my Alps meter back at some point so lots of screws removed uh, to remove the clamp there first of all that holds the two wires going out uh, and then there's three screws holding the modulator board on and you can then you know plug them up and plug the modular uh, connector there for the cable uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to reconnect that at all actually um, yeah I mean I should do really just for uh, you know, keeping this thing in its original uh, condition, uh, and then the screw, black screw down here uh, to get the board out. There were two screws on the transformer that I removed. You don't need to. The only reason you need to do that is if you want to remove the transformer completely. Um, but it is still. I'm presuming there's a screw under here somewhere. Uh, no, there isn't. I think. I'm not sure how it's held in actually. It just feels supported down here, like there's a screw somewhere down here on the front. Uh, but the main thing is we can get this board out now so we can inspect for dry solder joints and you know it's looking all right there uh no issues with solder i don't think uh yeah, there's bits of flux and stuff that perhaps need to clean off but the main thing is we can access these caps now um so i think we'll just check see if we can see whether that's a 4700 no you can't see uh, let's see if we can just uh, prise it up a little bit there we go yeah there you go as suspected 16 volts 4700 so yeah that's what's going on that's why we've got two windings i'm guessing these are out of phase with each other perhaps uh yeah the modulator is on the side of that cap actually so that might just be for the modular looking at how this is uh working here yeah so i don't think these are providing one single power output here i think there's just two five volt supplies I think that's what's going on because the modulator comes from as you can see is connected here which is connected to one side of that cap the 1000 microfarad cap there across this rail here uh, whereas the power for the uh, CPC is coming out from the middle there which connects to one of the other points on there so yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to draw some schematics for that, I think, to understand what's going on. So we've got some new 4700 microfarad caps. Granted, they're perhaps not the best brand. Uh, I'm not even sure what brand those are, actually. Um, but I've used these uh, many times before, actually. These are the last two I've got left. Uh, I've never had to swap them out again. These I've used these a lot in ST and STE power supplies, actually. I usually uprate some of the 2200 microfarad caps with 4700 uh, microfarad caps in those... Uh, ST power supplies actually, uh, and I think that's something Exos uh, recommends as well actually um, on his website there. So I think uh, yeah, we'll desolder. Uh, let's desolder one of these. Um, I'll just the way I'm going to do this is just to uh, make a note of the band. You know the band is on the inside of the board here, the negative. Uh, just heat from this side. Quite large uh, traces there, so they'll absorb a bit of heat. I think and just pull them through one at a time. And then I can use the uh, solder pump there just to unblock the holes. Uh, and we'll check those in a minute. Uh, are they 105 degrees? I can't see. Oh, yeah, they are 105 degrees C. So I'm putting like for like. Um, it might turn out that these are better than the ones I'm putting on, actually. But, yeah, they smell. I can I can smell sort of like a funny smell taking them off, actually, which suggests they're aged a bit. Um, it doesn't quite smell like electrolyte. It could just be the flux, actually, because they, you know, they've got crusty old flux on these haven't they? Uh, so we'll just uh, clean up those two solder points now with the solder pump that's one that's two they're quite wide uh, pins actually let's just try and hold that in place switch it on let it do its uh, thing and just see what it reports there we go so yeah ESR 0.00, .00 VLOS 2.2% 5034 microfarad so it's interesting it's reporting some voltage loss but it's saying it's got like zero ohms so I'll show you I've just run it a second time it was reporting yeah zero ohms ESR 
the loss 2.6 percent 5,000 microfarad so that's actually not too bad let's just test that compared to uh, a uh, new one I just need to just trim the leg off there a bit actually yeah so 0 0.03 ohms it's near on the microfarads uh, right in there and the VLOS 1.9% so it's you know a bit better uh, I mean these meters aren't that great to be fair uh, but yeah the microfarad rain is the main thing I mean it's consistent I'll give it that that's one thing with this it is consistent so let's just test the other new one uh, see what that says yeah so very similar slightly higher yes sir so I mean the fact that these are the original ones coming out zero ohms uh, on the ESR makes me think that they're a, a better cap actually yeah it's gone up a bit now hasn't it 0.2 uh, but the voltage loss there is a bit higher so I'll test these on my other meter so I've got the cap on the right way here uh, bent the legs just soldered it from underneath here uh, one of the nice things with these power supplies is you can get an electric shock as long as you're not plugged into the mains there are no you know mains uh, you know ID DC there's no DC uh, rectified you know main sort of level voltages or anything on the uh, on here no caps for that so like I say as long as your mains connection is uh, disconnected you know you've not got your mains lead in you can't get any shocks while you're working on these um, so that's one down uh, two to go so there we go that's the two 4700s done so the other thing I'll point out here is there's no thermal compound being used on the heat sinks here so I'm going to add a bit of uh, thermal compound on the back of those before I mount those again the other thing obviously you know we can do the 1000 microfarad uh, next got a brand new shiny 1000 uh, microfarad 105 degrees 35 volts like the high volts uh, which is not a bad thing um, it's a bit smaller it's funny how you know that again uh, you know things have shrunk down in size you know there's a big size difference there um, so other modifications you could do to something like this I was thinking you could uh, get a fan in there um, if you were going to do that what I'd be tempted to do is derive a supply from one of these from one of the AC sides here um, and use a snubber diode or something as well you know rectify it uh, direct from one of those perhaps the side that's um, on the modulator side or something the side you're not interested in really you know moving forward um, so you could do that there's plenty of room in here to mount a fan there's lots of vents on the thing uh, you know maybe here would be an idea or I don't know this you know you could modify it just like that I'm not going to do that um, so I will swap this out but the other thing we're going to do is use one of those little 5 volt power savers uh, from Buwak a little PCB because thinking about it I did mention it in my CPC uh, 464 repair video there um, and rather than hack, hack at the way at the 464 motherboard which is kind of like uh, you know a, a bit sacrilege really I don't want to hack that apart the power supply you know these things can you know kill systems if the you know if you don't do things like this you know preventative uh, measures and things with power supplies um, but in the off chance that perhaps one of these fails and shorts at some point we get like seven six seven eight nine volts or something going straight across uh, why not modify this so that's what I'm going to do you know the red wire you can see there you know that goes out to the din here so all we're going to do is just to solder that stick the wax little board in uh, series there perhaps just hot glue it down or something um, yeah I could do that, just a, it's a very very small PCB to use a bit of hot glue uh, at the same time I can secure these caps with a bit of hot glue as well um, and then it should be uh, secure from mobile voltage yeah so again so that's the 1000 uh, again it's not too bad you know it's a bit low there 919 and the other meter is confirming these readings actually capacitance wise they are a bit on the low side uh, well on the 1000 the two 4700s are a bit over which is kind of to be expected of caps of that era yeah, so the 1000's got a higher ESR, 0.99 ohms, voltage loss 1.9%. If you believe it, I'm not sure that's how I do, but the microfarad uh, capacitance uh, reading there is a bit lower, 919 on that 1000. So onto the last couple of caps here on the modulator, I've swapped out the 47 down here, that's smoothing the uh, supply to this chip I think. Uh, and then you've got three 22's down here. Uh, and they're all, I think they're quite large voltages, the one that are on there, like 16 volts or something, but you can go right down to, uh, well, that one there, I think I've put 16, 
These are a bit lower, these are like 10 volts or something I think. Uh, oh, they're 25 volts actually, but they're miniature. Um, so you can get quite low because all, all you've got coming out of here is the uh, uh, RGB, well coming in, is the RGB. The interesting thing with these is uh, the negatives on the remaining two are facing away from this chip. So the way it's wired on here is the positives are you know nearest the pin. So these are coupling caps. Um, you know, the, conversely, the ones in here are smoothing uh, caps. Uh, I'm just cleaning up the the work I've done around there now. Just get rid of some of the flux off. Uh, I'll give them a gentle brush just to make sure there's no particles of solder there. Um, I'm not going to go over the whole board. There's flux and stuff all over these, but. Um, it tends to be okay. The main thing is I don't want any bridges from the, uh, the soldering I've done there, so that's the main thing to make sure there's no particles of solder there. And the negative sides on all these smoothing caps here are all going to be connected to ground, I think. Uh, we'll just test that, uh, but I'm pretty sure they're all going to be uh, connected to each other, actually. Yeah, so those two negatives are connected to each other. Uh, let's just test between that one and this one. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, so all three negatives. Yep, yeah, so all three negatives uh, on these are all connected together. So the next thing to show you here, uh, I've got the wax uh, power saver connected to my uh, power supply there, just about uh, see it behind. Uh, yeah, wires everywhere <laughs> at the moment, you have to excuse the mess. Uh, if I just use the fine, uh, just increase it up gradually, you see, uh, we can get near five. And it's all okay. I'll measure the output in a minute just to show you that it does actually cut off on the output. Uh, we're getting near the top end of the fine adjust here now. As soon as we go over the threshold, which is about 5.34, somewhere between 5.3 4.4, there you go. So it cuts off, turned down a bit, it's okay. Up slightly, a bit more. I think it's near the 5.4, 5.38, 39, 40. It's going to cut any sec. There you go. So yeah, that's uh, that's exactly what we need. So that should it shoot up to, let's say, you know, uh, higher voltage there, you'll uh, have nothing and we'll show you. Uh, I'll just show you if we can do this. So measuring the output here now, if I just turn this up above 5.4, you see, as soon as we get to 5.4, it will just drop to zero. So we're getting near any second. There you go. See it's dropped to literally nothing, turn down a bit, down a bit, down a bit more, bang, back again. So yeah, it should be dead straightforward, like I say, the, uh, just disconnect this, um, and it doesn't get warm, and it, you can put like a, almost two, like two or three amps through that, and it's fine. Um, I use exactly the same thing on my Neo Geo, I'll show you in a minute actually. I've got one inside a piece of heat shrink with a, a, a DC, female and a DC male on either side just like a pass through from a Neo Geo uh, and that actually saved my Neo Geo just before Christmas because the power supply I was using it was a 3 amp power supply but it went and it went with a bang um, and I measured the voltage on it and it was like it had gone high I think it had gone it was outputting like 8 volts or something instead of 5 um, but this kicked in on the Neo Geo there, a little red LED lit. I thought, oh my god, what's happened to the power supply? That was when I went and investigated and measured the voltage and thought, bloomin' that has actually saved my Neo Geo. Um, so these things are, are brilliant, actually. I think they're, they're amazing, especially the size of it. I'm going to ask uh, Hans if he can uh, send me a few more of these. I wouldn't mind buying a few more, actually. Um, even if it's just in component form. Um, or if you could maybe open source the PCB or something and list the components and you know people can buy them you know e either way I don't mind even if these are like four or five pounds each I would buy them at that price it might seem a bit expensive because I'm sure they only cost uh, probably less than a pound to make I would think um, well excluding labor but they're just an absolute uh, lifesaver really grounds gonna come through the black wire the uh, 5 volts gonna come through red wire and then it's uh, that's top uh, pad there that's got a bit of solder on it's just going to be the output so whilst we're here as well it's a good idea just to test these diodes make sure none of them are shorted i've got it on diode test mode here you can see 0.460 that's about right uh, and they're going to vary from you know diodes will vary in their forward switching voltage uh yeah 474 uh and the one down here yeah, again, that's all right. But in terms of uh, looking for a ground, you know, I could connect to one of the caps down here, but also I think uh, ground as well. 
So there we go, there's our little PCB. Uh, it's pretty tightly bound actually by the wires, so I don't think I need to do anything with that. That's going to be fine, it's not going to, there's no effort to move uh, because the wires are so short. But it's a case of, like I say, the, the ground is connected to this down here where the red wire went on the board is where the input to the board's going and the output pad there is going to. So I just need to carefully now reassemble it. So I'll get a little bit of uh, thermal compound onto the back of these uh, devices here actually. You don't need a lot. It just needs a little bit of smearing around the back there like that. Otherwise it'll just smear out everywhere if you stick too much. Um, you know, technically speaking, coming back to the uh, protection there, you know, that Volvo voltage protection. When I did the uh, CPC 464 repair, as I showed in that video, or talked about in that video at least, um, you're better off doing it in the CPC itself, really, you know, if you want to protect your CPC, rather than, you know, doing it in the power supply. But what I think I'll do is uh, just stick a label around the back of the CPC saying, you know, 5 volts only, uh, just so it's crystal clear to anybody, uh, you know, connecting power. But this is the power supply I'll be using, you know, touch wood, as long as this doesn't die on me at any point. Um, I will always, ever, only ever be using this power supply with it. So there's actually a slot in the inside of the shield in there for the uh, PCB to fit in. Uh, I would do this screw first, even though I've got these in there, they're not tightened up, uh, and then tighten these up. Uh, just because you've got less chance of damaging the solder connections if you do it that way. You know, if you tighten these up first and then try to do this one and you're pulling the board around and stuff, you'll, you know, you could put stress on the, the connections there. So we're just on the last few uh, screws here now. There's just the two for the transformer. Just make sure you get your washers on. I just had to take those uh, screws off there because I've forgotten the washers actually. Uh, yeah, it's an important uh, part, otherwise, the, you know, the nuts can slip off if you've not got those. Uh, washers back in place. So this is the hard bit actually getting these damn screws into the transformer here. Yeah, so just get the washer over there. And the nuts back on the top. So before we get the lid on here, I just want to show you a few things actually. Um, if we just measure from ground, uh, anyone on the sea sink will do, uh, and we measure to the positive of that cap, you see we've got 10 volts. 10.7 volts uh, on the output of this diode here 10.74 volts so we've got like a, a half wave rectification you know one of the AC signals let's say is coming through here the AC voltage is through this diode into this cap half wave DC at 10.73 volts and it's the same thing on this side here this diode 10.73 on the positive side of that cap 10.74, the negatives are just connected to common ground obviously, so they're just smoothing. Um, and on these little regulars here, I'll try and do this without destroying the thing. Uh, pin 3 is the output, as you can see, 5 volts, it's the same on both of them. So they're both 5 volts uh, regulars there. Um, and the red wire that goes to the modulator, I wasn't sure until I just looked just now, it's 12 volts, and it's marked on the board 12 volts, so it's not uh, 5 volts to the modulator, 5 volts to the CPC, we've got 12 volts going to the uh, modular 5 volts to the CPC. I'm not quite sure how they're getting up from the uh, 2 loss of 5 volts to 12 volts actually. Um, no idea, if I test the output of this diode down here you can see we've got 12 volts, that's the 12 volts that's going to the uh, regular, uh, the, the modular there. So uh, there's very few of the components on here really, resistors, caps, um, I mean, the obvious thing is obviously to add those two voltages together. We should give that give you 20 volts, uh, but I'm not sure they're doing that. There's a diode down here that's shown 15.19 volts DC. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure how they're getting the 12 actually. Um, it's uh, a long time since I've worked on the theoretical side of anything like this, but I mean, it is dead straightforward. We do have two 5 volt regulars, you know, two separate tappings on the uh, white. Two, two different sets of windings on the transformer here, you know, roughly 10 volts DC coming into each side uh, here, you know, half wave, half wave. Um, but I, I guess I would suggest, you know, only one of these is going to be used for the uh, the supply to the uh, CPC. Um, the 12 volts is going to be a combination of the two. There must be some sort of little boost um, circuit or something going on there. I'm not quite sure. 
post in the comments down below if you can uh, if you've looked at all these before and you're clued up as to how they're getting 12 volts from 10 and 10 with the few components that are actually on there um, you know it's going to relate to the, the extra diodes and uh, that are on here I think so I'm not sure if I've got the uh, order of the cables at the back here in the right order compared to where they are supposed to feed out I honestly can't remember I did look back at the footage there it was hard to tell but we'll just get this on that's it so that's the back on I just need to get the four screws in So I'll clean the case uh, gently with some uh, IPA here just to get any dirt off. You can see uh, how dirty that is actually, it's filthy, absolutely filthy. It's had decades of uh, sitting around uh, in a dirty uh, location I think, and lots of use as well. Good God, this is really bad. I mean it should be no surprise really, you saw how dirty the uh, CPC itself was. Oh, look at that, that's just disgusting. So I guess this is another example of something perhaps where I should have uh, took the plastic part off and just washed it in the sink. But, yeah, I'm not going to spend ages on this, just go around the outside of it and clean off as much of that dirt as I can. My God. And just because we can, we'll get a bit of uh, back to black on there as well, actually. Sweet. That's something else I always do here is uh, check the fuse actually and the plug. Uh, sometimes the wiring has either come loose or it was never fitted right to start with, or it has a 13 amp crazy sized fuse. Uh, exactly. That's a good example. So we'll change that. Uh, I think a 3 amp will be alright for that. It shouldn't, shouldn't pop with 3. Uh, and just test uh, you know, your connections here, tying these up. Uh, yeah, that was a bit loose. Um, make sure your strain relief has got a good grip on the cable there, which it has. So I'll get a 3 amp in there, um, I might even just clean these up, sometimes you can use a tiny little bit of like a lightly abrasive sandpaper or a fiberglass pen or something, just to clean these up because they, you know, they did go oxidised uh, over a period of time. Yeah, so I'll have a go with the 3 amp, uh, let's see if that works alright. Yes, I mean it's not essential to do things like this, but I always tend to if they're, if they're looking pretty uh, oxidised there. And then clean the contacts up with a bit of IPA as well, just to make sure you get any, uh, you know, the contamination off there. And then IPA uh, on the uh, plastic part actually, just to clean this up as well. Uh, just make sure you don't plug it in when it's uh, slightly damp. And we'll clean the cable up as well while here, you can see how dirty that cable is actually. It's absolutely filthy. So all plugged in, uh, it's not humming as much actually since I tightened up the bolts there. That label could do with like pulling off and reattaching, can you see it just like it's lifted up a little bit there, I'm not sure if you can do that from the inside uh, or what, I mean in theory if it's got like a scalpel or under there I could just lift it and then put some glue and then stick it back down, I might do that later off camera, it's not that important um, but the, the main thing is it's uh, it's a quieter, uh, switch it on and you can see in the CPC there, no worries at all. Yeah, it's all looking fine. So just because we can, I thought I'd test the RF modulator as well, as you can see. Awful, absolutely awful. Um, let me see if we can uh, get out of that. Yeah, that looks terrible, absolutely terrible. Yeah, there we go. Actually, it's not too bad, actually. Um, but when it's loading, those bands, you know, the bands down the sides were actually interfering with the uh, middle of the picture and stuff there. But, yeah, let's bring it back memory, seeing how awful RF is. Uh, back in RGB, uh, yeah, looking fantastic. Uh, there was no sound with RF, that's interesting. Um, post in the comments down below if you know more about that. I mean, I've not looked at the schematics or anything for this uh, modulator. But I'm guessing the sound just comes out of the CPC. They thought there's no point in modulating it. So, uh, yeah, there's no sound. Yeah, I need to deal with that. That's going to bug me because it's, it's not stuck down right. But if I just get something really sharp like that, can you see that's coming up? Yeah, there you go. There's hardly anything holding that on. 
so uh, I'm just going to get some uh, double sided tape actually two strips of double sided tape and then I'll stick that back down yeah so that's all it needs is uh, two double sided uh, tape strips there like I say and just uh, peel And there we go, stuck that back down. Sweet. So, nothing uh, witty uh, on this one, actually. Uh, I'm just going with uh, practical, actually, just so that it's clear what's been done to this. Yeah, 5 volt over protection, recapped March 2018. So the CPC technically not required because obviously it says 5 volts DC there but uh, you might actually not be able to see that because of the uh, you know the way it's uh, sunk into the plastic there you know you're looking at an angle like that you can't really read it whereas that uh, clearly it just indicates 5 volts Yeah so working fine uh, back on RGB here thanks for watching I'll see you soon